Welcome to the 2024 uh, Saudi Arabian Grand Prix reaction. And I'm joined in by the Captain AGX. Hello, I'm here this week. Let's go. Yeah, finally. Uh, it was a <laughs> week trout <laughs> of, uh, of you. Okay. Uh, we're back again for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix uh, reaction. Sorry. Uh, I've done the predictions myself. Uh, you send me yours, and I got them in the spreadsheet, and I made a video talking to myself for like 20 minutes. <laughs> I, hey, look, I that's, entire, that's pretty much my entire channel, so. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, I would say we were pretty good in our predictions, at least from the first look. Like, both of us got some really good picks. Yeah, I think I think straight up, the, the first, you know, few, the... The top ranking ones were very, very uh, good, and then yeah. uh, as it gets into the race, maybe it get more chaotic. But yeah, very happy with our starting predictions. Yeah, there's not really much to talk about the race itself, other than the few talking points like Oliver Behrman subbing in for uh, Carl Sainz, obviously who had to undergo the surgery for uh, appendicitis. I think that's how it's called. Um, yes. Basically, yes. I, I had a, yeah. yeah, if you didn't know what it is, you can talk. Well, I was going to say, which is what uh, obviously Albon had. I believe because Albon's went uh, quite bad in surgery, that's why he was out for so long. But uh, Sainz shouldn't be out for as long. He might be back at the next race. He might have to take a little longer than that. But uh, yeah, he, he should be back quicker than Albon because Albon's uh, went poorly. And that's why he was out for so long last season. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't remember the race subbing in for Albon. It was like one race. Oh, that... yeah, it was two seasons ago. Jesus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long, a long one season ever since like half of 2022. It's pretty much the same season, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, Oliver. In my opinion, did amazingly for what yeah. for what we expected. I, obviously, we both we both had a, t a little talk for uh, for the Grand Prix that we expected Oliver to deliver. Uh, obviously, he did, and I'm, I'm, I'm like I'm pretty satisfied. I, I think I think he could have done couldn't have done much better. It was like the yeah. ideal scenario. P seven, in my opinion, is great. Uh, Outplacing Norris and Hamilton behind us, so just... I was gonna say, yeah, he's the second highest ranking Brit British driver in that weekend. So, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a, give, given your competition, that's a pretty uh, good standard. Uh, I love, I love the fact he, he got put in. The fact that I can now go Oli, 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 Oi, 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 almost beat Hamilton, obviously in in Q two, almost got into it, but. Yep. Uh, Given the you know the car doesn't fit him, everything was pretty much you know it's his first experience in F one at eighteen, yeah. being suddenly chucked in. It was it was a pretty a pretty good uh, performance, and yeah, I, I hope to see him more in the future. Not sure where, guessing Haas. <laughs> yeah. Don't think it'll be Ferrari, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, uh, obviously a really good really good start for Ollie Berman. Yeah, it was uh, very, very impressive ever since practice, like, practice started, uh, the first few laps were, like, learning the, learning the car, and obviously he, he knew the track, he raced it before, he got his gold pole position in F2 just before the third practice, so he knew the track, he just needed to add, adapt to the car, which obviously he hasn't ever driven before on a, such a high-speed track where one mistake can destroy your entire weekend. And yeah. I mean, no mistakes, pretty, like no major mistakes. There was just a few lockups here and there, but those are pretty, pretty usual for Ferrari drivers, obviously. <laughs> so yes, definitely. So yeah, I, was, I was just fully impressed by entire Oli's uh, Oli's weekend. Just even qualifying P eleven is not bad considering all the all the context behind uh, behind all of the all of it. Just, just very impressive, and that the race was like even, even at a higher level. I expect, I honestly expected like P nine or P ten, maybe. He just straight up beat Norris and Hamilton. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, those two had like a pretty, pretty bad uh, strategy. Strategy, yeah. Thanks to the safety car, but still, they they both had softs uh, chasing Behrman, who 
wasn't as quick as those drivers ahead, but it wasn't like far off. I think it was in the end like six seconds behind Russell before Russell had that issue in the last few laps. So he he, he could he could like manage the pace pretty well. It wasn't wasn't that far off uh, the top runner space, which is even more impressive. First race, like the tire management, the race, entire race management with all the settings there is that there, there is on the F1 car that he probably haven't seen because I, I imagine Ferrari is more developed than Haas in terms of settings you can do to the car. Uh, so yeah, just I gotta praise him enough. Just amazing weekend for for Ollie, and I I'm really happy for him. Yeah, I I completely agree. Great weekend. Great uh, debut. Um, yeah, I've just <laughs> <laughs> you know, so all I can uh, sort of say for now. I, I really think he did well. Yeah, that's like the the only talking point apart from like a few Hello. other from the race itself. Bad times, yes. Well, if we get into our predictions, I think I think they are going to sprout a lot of talking points. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so we, if we start with qualifying. Yep. And pole position, no, <laughs> no surprise there. We both are correct with Max Pole by over three tenths of a second, I think, uh, over Charles and P2, which mm. is a point for me. It is a point for you. A good a good prediction. And it was I very should, close. Uh, obviously, yeah. the close is incredibly quick in one, one laps. So, uh, yes, unfortunate for me there. But, uh, yeah, a good, a good prediction from you. Yeah, I was I was kind of lucky in the, in the sense that Carl's didn't even take place in this uh, in this uh, qualifying end race. Obviously, Ollie did an amazing job. By by, imagine uh, Science would have been at least in the top five. And in this case, we both don't get points from it. And, and yeah, you had Perez there. We obviously got P three, but none of us predicted Perez to be in P three. Very close. Yes, unfortunately. Just, um, yeah. it, it, well, we'll we'll talk about it. But my predictions were the same uh, for race and for, <laughs> for qualify. Yeah, yeah. I, I I saw that during the predictions. I was like, yeah, you, you were pretty pretty conservative there. Um, it, it almost worked. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. True, true. Uh, at least you got the podium, which obviously we'll talk about later. Um, yeah. P4 in reality was, I believe, Alonso, who I don't think... Yes, any, it was Alonso, yeah. I don't think either of us expected Alonso to be in the top five after yeah. covering. Yeah, you, you, you've you actually knocked out the park with qualifying, can I say? Because not only... Obviously, yeah, we weren't expecting Alonso. He was really quick on one lap, but sort of suddenly didn't have the pace when it came to the final uh, Q3. Yeah. That being said, Verstappen was obviously miles ahead of everyone else. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he looked pacey. Unfortunately, couldn't couldn't bring that into uh, the race or into the qualifying in the end. Yeah, I think the gap was mostly just there. Just Max plus Red Bull duo, just not really pushing until the until the final final Q3. Yes, definitely, because they don't really have. They don't really have a reason to push in Q1 or Q2 because they're obviously getting in, yeah. even, uh, you know, even with a uh, bank lap. It's just how it how it goes. Uh, Perez is the uh, is another another thing. Perez he got into Q3 both uh, both times this season already, which is uh, better than the, than the ending of the last season already. But the gap is still very big. It was like three and a half. Yeah, I would say match. things are looking up, but he yeah. is also just so far behind. Yeah, I can imagine yeah. if, if 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 Max was like, if if the Red Bull was, for example, as quick as the Ferraris, so we can imagine Charles and Max being pretty much the same uh, in terms of pace. Perez would be like P nine area, honestly. Which is mm. just not good. It's just, he's profiting from Red Bull being dominant right now in terms of those P2s uh, in the races. Yeah, yeah it'd yeah. be interesting to see if they still keep him, which I feel we'll talk about throughout the season quite a bit. So Yeah, you're right. P4, yeah, Alonso, so none of us get a point. Um, and, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I got 
screen. Okay. I was gonna say, and then you got you get a cheeky point of Piastri beating his team, mate. Eh? <laughs> Yeah, I I got I got PS3 below the race, but somehow I got the point for PS3. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's alright. Yeah, I have Good no prediction. Idea. <laughs> yeah, I think I how did I get this prediction? To be honest. McLaren didn't even seem that quick uh throughout the weekend. Even even up until Q3, they they didn't ever seem like a contender for like top three. It was always like the Ferraris and the Red Bulls. McLaren I don't know if I would say that they're the third fastest car. It's difficult to say because of the Aston degradation, but probably they were uh, based on where Piastri was, because Piastri was behind that pack of Red Bulls and Leclerc. So we can, I guess we can say that McLaren was the third best car, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I'd give it probably third best. Yeah, because obviously... I was going to say we'll we'll get we'll get into it later. I think I think obviously this track still doesn't suit them, but yeah, Piastri just sort of kept Alonso at an arm's length for the entire race, and even when it came down to when Hamilton was chasing Norris, he just couldn't catch him. Yeah, McLaren's had an insane speed in the sector one, but in, in the streets, McLaren was a very very slow, essentially. Yeah. And Mercedes had the opposite problem. They were, they were very slow in the sector one, but they were very good in the, in the other two sectors. And this basically all their gap to, to, to the top, well, to the Red Bull in this case, was in sector one, where they were like, in, in some places they were slower than Alpine, for example, at least from the data, which is mm. very, very bad looking for Mercedes, who hoped to finally bring a competitive car for the season after... Uh, ending with the no uh, no side pods philosophy or whatever that was. Yes, <laughs> they just didn't seem to figure out the car, and I don't know what to think about Mercedes. They they promised us a, a championship championship winning car third year in a row, and they still haven't delivered. And they seem to have delivered even the worst car out of the three. Basically. As of right now, it looks like it's the worst car out of the three they brought for this new regulations ever since 2022, which kind of proves Hamilton's point of leaving, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I will say I expect it to be probably the best car at the end of the season. Um, but yeah, it's not looking good currently. Uh, the ideology was off when designing it. And, uh, yeah, it's not looking good for Mercedes, is it? But uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, I, I think because they can sort of uh, bend it more towards how they want it to perform, it will probably be quicker come the end of the season, more up there. But uh, currently it's not looking good. I heard rumours that uh, Red Bull were looking at no side pods, but... <laughs> Uh, that would be funny. <laughs> yeah, we may see the the Imola upgrade. I think that is, or the Japan upgrade. I think they're bringing upgrade averse like uh, at the early parts of the season. That's supposed to be very close to the no zero, zero pod, uh, whatever <laughs> philosophy. Uh, and yeah, if we if we see that working on the Red Bull, we can. Can just straight up say that Mercedes haven't worked it out, and they're just inferior designers in this case. Because if Red Bull can bring their philosophy uh, into actual pace on the track, it's just uh, impressive from Red Bull in this case. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay impressive from Red Bull. And if we go to race results, yes. the number one two craziness. Yeah. Absolute craziness, the most exciting race of the entire decade. <laughs> yeah, Bar- Barris gets a five second penalty, still comes second. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know the gap between Perez and Leclerc in the end. I think it was like maybe like 10 seconds. I don't know. It, 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 was, was, uh, it was something. Yeah, it, it, was, it was a huge gap because Perez had a pretty comfortable lead even after the five second penalty. So. So yeah, uh, Red Bull in their own league, two points for for both of us there. And Charles in P3 as well, so we got the entire podium, correct? Nice. Yes, yes. A very, a very good, they, they were just above and beyond the rest of the drivers, these three. Um, obviously, Leclerc 
can't catch up with the rest, but uh, yeah, they're a very, a very good uh, race from them. I, I don't really have much to say. I can't lie. <laughs> Perez's overtake on Leclerc was okay, <laughs> sort of wow. to be expected. Oh, an amazing DRS overtake. <laughs> what a move! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think the actual interesting point next is Lando Norris, because that jump start. How how is he not got a penalty? <laughs> I I have no idea. Honestly, based on the based on the what I felt during the race, I thought he was going to get a penalty. And when the FI message came, that no no further investigation, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I just yeah. Apparently, I don't understand. Yeah. Apparently there was some kind of a fault in the in the sensor that it was basically a technical fault on the sensor that didn't seem to register the the jump start itself. Obviously there was this uh, this thing that Norris didn't gain anything from the jump start, actually lost time, but I, I don't think that should be they should be taking into account when deciding the penalty. Uh, but in the end, like the the sensors that they had didn't show any jump start, and apparently they just decided to buy it and just gave Norris no penalty, even though it was it was it could yeah. sensors mentions you can literally see it with your eyes. F1. Yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I mean, Norris would have finished like behind Hamilton probably if if it was for the penalty, because I assume it would be like ten seconds, or was it? Yeah, it would have, I believe. Or actually, I think it could be a drive-through. I don't know if uh, that applies to uh, jump starts. Uh, which penalty was given to Alonso, by the way, uh, last year? Uh, oh, it... I think I think it was meant to be a ten-second penalty, and he only got, or he didn't get a penalty from memory. Actually, Alonso's was for the like for a wrong starting position, not a jump start. But I, I don't remember the last yeah, okay. time, the last time a driver had a jump start like penalty wise. So I don't really know the exact penalty, but I know it's they got harsher penalties uh, for this year, at least from uh, from what we saw in Magnussen, because uh, those would be either no penalties or five second penalties in the in the years before, and they you not. Know, Magnuson just got straight up 10 seconds 10 second penalties for every single one of them. And yeah, Magnuson is a is a whole different talking talking point. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh so yeah, the our actual fourth place was uh Piastri, yep. uh, who performed very well this weekend. Uh was in, I was quite impressed by him. Yep. Uh just kept Alonso at arm's right uh, arm's length, obviously couldn't race the top uh free, but yes. Solid performance from him. Yeah, I completely agree. PS3 outperformed Norris in the, during the entire weekend, which mm. is impressive in itself, like beating beating Norris straight out on pace in both qualifying and the race. Obviously, there was this, this strategy for Norris, but Norris was supposed to get a jump start, and even before before that, without a jump start, was still behind PS3. So, yeah, I think PS3 would have finished ahead either way. So yes, yeah, I'm gonna agree with that, and we'll get to the that later as well. Yep. Uh, P5 was Alonso, which we both got wrong. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, again, again, he, solid performance from Alonso all weekend. You're actually pretty close with Russell. I think Russell finished P6. Uh, yes, I believe he did. Yes. Um, yeah, because it was all the British drivers in a row, wasn't it? It was Russell, <laughs> Bam, and Norris, Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I think uh, the actual talking point, though, should be Alonso's uh, teammate, who we'll actually talk about later as well. But uh, maybe I want to get done now. Uh, that, that crash now. They caused the safety car that basically made sure that everyone just finished on hards at the end of the race. I did think that maybe Norris and Hamilton would end up being okay, based on the fact that I thought everyone would have to pit again, but no, hards just ended, lasted to the end, yeah. and uh, made the race very boring in the end. But uh, that was such a stupid crash. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was but... such a large straw crash, a needless crash. I know he's pushing, because of course all these drivers are constantly pushing, but 
it was it was silly. It was definitely something go you don't expect maybe from F two drivers rather than F one. Yeah, you would expect this to happen to Bar- Bearman, for example. But yeah, I was gonna say yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, happened to a driver who's been last like seventh or eighth season in Formula One. I think like Stroll has been there yeah, since twenty seventeen. It's a long time. It's eighth season in Formula One, and he still has these random crashes. They're absolutely his fault. And in qualifying, mm-hmm. again, Stroll was miles behind Alonso. Just, I, I really, really hope he decides to leave Formula One because he's never getting dropped himself. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so I really hope he just decides to leave on his own after just losing the, losing the drive or losing the, the, the need to drive in Formula One. I just don't know what's going on in Stroll's head. And unfortunately, we still have him in the in the other Aston Martin, which, in my opinion, if if, if they had two Alonso last last year, they could have finished like between the constructors, honestly. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you're right, but it depends on the like. I think they kept Vettel, maybe. Yeah, that's that. If if they would kept Vettel and uh, replaced Stroll with Alonso, that would be an amazing lineup. Like six drivers championship in the in that Aston Martin, which at the start of 2022 was also very uh, sorry 2023 was uh, very good. Like Alonso got like so many podiums yeah. at the start of the year, so I imagine Sab would be much, much closer to Fernando based on the gap that's probably Stroll... have a bit of drama. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine if, if Sab had a, had a better car, he would actually try more because uh, what I what I what I saw from Fatal in this in this last year is like when he doesn't feel motivated and enough and doesn't feel supported by his team, he just doesn't Try as much, and that translates into results more often than not. It's uh, 2020, for example, like that was just he pretty much gave on Ferrari, gave up on Ferrari. Ferrari just didn't want to continue with Seth. And 2020, 2021 was okay because Fatal actually won almost won two races in 2021. I don't think uh, many people will remember that. And 2022 was just the car started really bad after their new wrecks and just. Sab just said, whatever, I'm just going to quit F1 and uh, become a beekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. What could have been uh, if we had uh, Sab and Alonso both in? Would have been amazing, yes. Well, well, they still wouldn't be able to challenge you first because uh, we all know who's going to get that every race. Next up in <laughs> our... Uh, I think is fastest laps who uh, who didn't actually get it. He didn't get it, unfortunately. Yep. Um, I should have kept put on my prediction last week of Hamilton. Then I would have been right. Wait, I think Charles got it right. I uh, did. Charles get it. I thought I, it was I, think, I think Charles got it on the on the last lap on like forty three oh, lap okay. hard. Because I'm pretty sure Hamilton had it before the last lap, but then. Verstappen got it from him, and Charles got it from Verstappen, because Max had cold tires or whatever, so Charles was about to... Yes, he did. He did. You are correct. He did take it. So Charles got the fastest lap. Not bad. It's good that that can happen, but I don't think it's uh, it's a thing that we can see. It uh, still means nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much what I'm trying to say. Just Max had the one lap we didn't Put things together and get a fastest lap, which happens nine out of the ten times. So yeah, I'm happy for Charles for the fastest lap, but doesn't change anything in the end. Okay, um, shall we okay, move? These to... these are quite embarrassing for me, so let's maybe get through them quite quickly. <laughs> Although you got the, the Russell or the RB or uh, whatever team racing wolves, um, they didn't have a good weekend. But no, they didn't. They didn't. Sunoda, this is probably my one okay one, but I still think you take the points for it. Sunoda, in my opinion, saved the team from being the least impressive team. Because <laughs> he, he, he got into Q3, mm-hmm. outqualified, uh, not outqualified, he, he got ahead of Hamilton and Behrman in, in Q2, made it into Q3, and obviously then in the race. It was very unfortunate in times, but. In the end, uh, Magnus did a good job and kept all those cars behind. I don't think Taras, uh, how do you call this team? Tarasa, I just gonna call it. 
uh, didn't have the best weekend, but they were not the least impressive team, which I think comes, uh, goes to Sauber this time. It and, does, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like... they were atrociously slow in qualifying, and in the race, finished, like, both of them finished last, despite Joe running the top 10 for a majority of the race. And then <laughs> finally, when Joe had to pit, he just had, like, a minute pit stop or <laughs> something like that, just... How can you screw up this one good thing about your entire weekend and show uh, putting in a great performance and just you just gave, gave him a five, 50 second pit stop or whatever and Joe finished last despite running in the top 10 for the entire race? I'm just. How? how <laughs> yeah. The, silly, 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 silly. Yeah. The, 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 these things I, I expected from Haas, but they're instead they're helping the server, which I mean, yeah, I, I guess I'll get a, get a point here. Because that was just yes. awful. Yeah, I agree. But no. the easy person driver, obviously Albon, I think, don't, don't, doesn't count, doesn't even come into the consideration because he beat Sargent and that's the only thing he needed to do in order to not be yeah, here. Yeah. And Hamilton, he had a really bad weekend, but I don't think he was the least impressive driver that comes to, that goes to another driver, in my opinion. Yeah, hit me with the driver. There should be uh, Daniel Ricciardo straight up. I, I oh, was, I was. Oh, very, I was thinking Daniel. I was very sad about Daniel's uh, start of the season. I already, I still am, because I was a fan of Daniel pretty much ever since like 2018, uh, where I really started to watch Formula One. I was a fan of Hulkenberg, Ricciardo, and then Ricciardo came to Renault. That was I was a fan of Renault, uh, Ricciardo plus Hulkenberg. That was. That was the best time for me, and obviously Hulk Hamilton dropped. But I st- st- still did Ricardo for for those McLaren years, which weren't good. Then he got uh, he got dropped and came back. I was like, yeah, maybe maybe one last chance. Maybe Ricardo ha- still has it in himself after those McLaren years. This this year started. I was hopeful. Uh, that pr- that second practice or what what was it uh, in Bahrain? He got like first in practice. And then in qualifying, got destroyed by Sonoda in the race. Only finished ahead of Sonoda thanks to the thanks to the driver swap. Comes Saudi Saudi Arabia, gets out qualified by Yuki by half a second. Yuki gets into Q3, while Daniel is just nowhere in the race. The same thing. Daniel just well, has no can pace. I, can I argue a point here? There's this thing that Ricardo had the bad pit stop, which I obviously know about, but still, even without that. He had just no pace for the entire weekend. Uh, and you can you can now state your points, obviously. You gave Hamilton least impressive last week for a seventh place finish. I would say a ninth place finish is worse than a seventh place finish, would you? Okay, okay. I, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're Shake saying. But <laughs> hear, hear me out, hear me out. Last weekend I gave it to Hamilton because I couldn't think of a driver less impressive than Hamilton. That we can, and mm, here, okay, here, I, I don't think Hamilton was like, yeah, he, he finished P9 and obviously got qualified by Russell. And yeah, it wasn't the best weekend for Hamilton, but if the strategy he, he, got, out, him, he got out performed by Ollie Behrman, like, you know, he, he so, <laughs> I don't know if you can say it like that, it's just. Oh, it, yeah, imagine, look, look, when we get when we're coming down to, it, I think actually the least impressive driver this race should be Stroll, and that's the other thing. I don't think uh, I don't think I. So expect, expect I'm it. willing not I'm willing not to get the points for it, even you know. Okay, I saw I see your point about last week, so that's fair. Um, you know, I would have probably gave it Gasly still or Sergeant, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I see your point. So yeah, I, I don't think yeah, I, I don't think I'll have the point there. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to accept that. Did you did you see the reaction to last race, like my video? To, did you no, actually? No. Because uh, I explained a lot of my thoughts there about last race and how I how I how I, how I look at things and yeah, there, there was a lot of info there. If uh, if you want to know more context as well, why. It, who I gave the least, most impressive, whatever. My Hamilton got least impressive driver. Oh, yeah, no, I'm joking. Yeah, I, do, right. I do agree with you. I think you've made a good point there. So I'm, 
and accepting of them. Yeah, that was just honestly. If you if you were in that reaction, I think we still still would have given it to Hamilton. Is my yeah, opinion. me too. Me too. Because I expected Hamilton to beat Russell in Bahrain and to actually be competitive based on how the testing went, how the practice went even. Yeah. Like yeah, Hamilton, Hamilton topped the practice. Uh, it was like looking very good and qualifying just, he was nowhere. He was beaten by Russell by like seven places. It was, just, yeah. Uh, to this weekend, I expected actually, uh, like you, you gave, they gave the least impressive average drive to Hamilton because you expected him to underperform compared to Russell, which he did, but there were drivers mm -hmm. who were less impressive than Hamilton. Yes, yes, exactly. I agree. I think Stroll probably takes deserves the cake on least yeah. least impressive driving. The fact I gave Stroll most impressive driving is more <laughs> of a crime. So uh, I definitely don't deserve any points <laughs> for any of these predictions, to be honest. So um, yeah, I'm willing to take the red on this one. <laughs> Maybe you should. I'm actually... so annoyed at myself. Why did I think Stroll would? Uh, Maybe... I think I think this is a. Hmm? Okay, maybe you should try to give the most impressive team, most, very, most impressive driver to Red Bull and Max next time. So <laughs> you can reverse jinx it into it because you gave it to Sauber and Stroll, who were like the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, okay, no points here, Dan. That's really sad. Are you sure I didn't get confused when I sent my, when I sent my thing? I. I don't know. You just sent me the Discord message. I just yeah, yeah. I, I've obviously messed up myself. I should have sent the other way. I mean, if if you would pick Alonso for most impressive, I, I don't know if I would pick Alonso honestly. Yeah, I put bad driver, bad car, <laughs> Hamilton, bad car, racing balls. So yeah, okay. Um. Anyway. Anyway, yeah. Most impressive team. Uh, my opinion. Probably goes to Haas. Yes, I was gonna say. I think. I think I'd give Piastri most if we if we squeeze the two together. I think you still get a point for Piastri being a uh, most impressive driver, but I do think that Haas deserve it just based on how they worked as a team to get that point. You know. Yeah, I, I think that was that was really good, really good for both drivers. Yeah, I'm just honestly impressed with Haas. Just. Based on just how the season already going, because they seem to be like the sixth fastest car, the actually functioning team, which wasn't the case last last season. It is not much. looking good for our uh, the the greatest um, team principal of all time, is it? Yeah, just the 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 season. Gunther leaves. A random Japanese guy comes in and just straight up revives yeah. has into being a point-scoring team in this in this very tight era. Yeah, I'm very impressed with Haas. This, that was a... Not it was like a they, great strategy. The fact that in every lap, Magnussen just... Slot, like, he'd do, he'd do a quick final second and third sector and then just slow everyone the hell down in that first sector. It was, it was impressive to see, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um... I am willing to give you Piastri, though. I do think, uh, obviously, Hulkenberg deserves a shout here, but uh, I think it was more of a team effort where Piastri... Yeah, yeah. I, I was impressed with. I, you know, he beat, he beat Norris convincingly the, the whole weekend, so yeah. yeah. We, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. I just wanna, wanted to mention, uh, in my opinion, Red Bull also deserves to mention the most impressive team. I know you, what you're going to say. Red Bull obviously <laughs> is expected to win, but I, I didn't expect them to win this, this way just straight up like they didn't even try <laughs> they didn't even try to win Perez just swept by Charles and just they just cursed to, to the victory I don't think they even pushed uh throughout the last laps they just managed the pace and just won but like nothing ever happened I, I agree but I I'm now I'm I think this is going to be the story of the season if I'm up this I'm ready for that yeah. uh I won't give it them you know I wouldn't give it a Red Bull because the double stack was a uh, a tragedy. Um, yeah, they, the the thing with Perez, I think that was that was that was not good. But yes, they can they That's can good. give Max a twenty second penalty and still gonna win the race. So. Yeah, true, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Sadly so, sadly so. Mentioning our predictions, McLaren 
they were better than last weekend, but still not impressive enough. And Sauber, obviously, we, we picked them for the least impressive. So, so yeah. Um, okay, most impressive. Actually, I I don't think Piastri was the most impressive. I just I just I, okay. As as I uh, explained with Behrman, I think he was the most impressive driver this weekend. I that that's fair but you didn't know berman was going to be in that's yeah, my only but point of call if i you. would if we decided that it, uh, the science counts for berman so if i would pick science for the most impressive driver then i would get it <laughs> because based on berman and in this case i i i don't, I don't think piastri was as impressive as berman in all the context okay, okay all, that's fair yeah. i still think he deserves a shout out yeah there's definitely a shout out piastri had an amazing weekend i'll perform norris in uh all the sessions and yeah, g- great weekend by Piastri, but I don't think he was pretty invisible, to be honest. Just yeah, the the whole thing that he couldn't get past Hamilton because of the straight line speed, but that was the only thing we saw from Piastri, in my opinion. Just very in- invisible, just wasn't on TV. Apart from that, just yeah, he kept going off yeah. as well. That was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it went under the radar. Just that's how, how we could say it. Yeah. Uh, the other shout uh, was their Hulkenberg. Uh, I don't think that deserves to be here based no, on... It's definitely a team effort. Yeah, because it was a lot of the team effort. But it, also, there's this thing that Hulkenberg had the same strategy as Norris and Hamilton Apple had, but actually could pit because uh, thanks to Magnussen's uh, dirty, dirty work. But... Well, they also had the same strategy as a uh, asserted as Salba driver who ended up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we mentioned that. Um, just wanted to say that Hulkenberg also had an issue in qualifying where he looked faster than Magnussen again, which kind of explained in qualifying. And Magnussen qualified like P12, I think, bad Berman. So, yes. We, we could expect Hulkenberg to maybe even challenge for a Q3 in qualifying. And then in the race, he would have been in an even better position. Probably still only P10, but would be more. I would be more willing to give it to Holkenberg in the in that case. But here, it's just I think the Haas deserves it as a team, but not Holkenberg as a driver. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm I'm I would be willing to get like uh, get the point for Piastri if it wasn't for uh, for Behrman and just incredible debut. That I'm just so impressed with. Uh, I, I, I would I would not feel right if I would give it to Piastri after what we just saw. That's fair. Yeah, I understand. Okay, so points and okay, my my prediction obviously incorrect and the is I believe as well because there was only one safety car, right? Wait, uh, there was only one safety car. I liked your your sneakiness there. Only one Red Bull on the podium, despite putting <laughs> both of them in your predictions on. I, I, yeah. I like that strategy. I like I, that strategy. Actually, if you if you look at my predictions, I went the the I, I did the exact same thing with McLaren. I picked Lando to finish ahead of Piastri, and I picked Piastri for the most impressive driver in case he, <laughs> out, he outperforms Norris. <laughs> so sneaky, sneaky. So I played both sides so that so that I always come out on top, or however <laughs> the meme is. <laughs> Yeah. Um, one last thing. Um, oh, what I, I I forgot what I what I want to say. Sorry. Um, no problem. Okay, I completely forgot what I wanted to say. Wait. Wow. Well, um, what am I doing? One point for cyber. That was what I wanted. To yeah, say. I was gonna say I'm not looking. It's not looking good on the point total here <laughs> for me. Okay, you're six points behind after race two. But it's the exact same scores as last week. The, the the season is long, okay, and I'm I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, known yeah. for for sometimes just not believing in Max or stuff, and then you may just get yes. points over. <laughs> Your greatest weakness. <laughs> my greatest weakness, is my hope. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I don't I don't think I'll I'll. I'll remember what I wanted to say before that. So, yeah, we're at the end of this uh, thingy. I'll add the points into to oh, we actually they already added themselves. So I uh, they're automatic. So yeah, fourteen to eight. 
Yeah. After the first two races. Yes. Yes. Both but, on the exact same average. Let's say I'm I'm doing a bit of a first happen myself, but <laughs> uh, you are, you are true. Yeah. If you look at the how long this season is, though, oh yeah. Um, what are we one percent through or not even? Uh, sorry, ten percent through, but I don't think we're even that. Mm, but ten percent is two out of twenty, and we're two out of twenty-four, so. So less, yeah, less than Jesus 10. Christ. Yeah, still 22 <laughs> races to go. Yeah. Oh, bloody Nora. Uh, yeah, 22 more Dutch anthems, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we should. It's true. <laughs> maybe we should what's, implement. What's the, new re- what's the new race this year that wasn't last year? Um, um, uh, China. China. China's oh, break. cool! China's back slash probably not. Yeah, Japan. Japan is uh, moved to race four. Also, that's uh, that's a new yes, one. Yes, yes, I did know that. Yeah, you got the 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 less uh, flying everywhere F one calendar. <laughs> okay, Australia. That's next week. I think is a beer. Uh... Yes, yes, it is. Yep, uh, and Japan should be two weeks after that as well. So long breaks between the weekends, but as we get to the European uh, section of the of the of the calendar, over this, obviously there are some double headers and triple headers. So there's gonna be a lot of oh, other races. Fun. Yeah, twenty four races. <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of content this year, definitely. Uh, definitely, at, at least Hopefully. on this channel. Yeah, not not as much yeah. on uh, <laughs> in the, on track itself. Well, I was gonna say that is what what what's that? Two two races per video, you get forty eight races or forty eight videos at least. And yeah. That's not even including the ones we've already done. Yeah, and there's this one video and I'm working on, and I still haven't finished editing. Uh, that I don't know, really know where I'm gonna put out because I have like very limited time, but hopefully soon. Um, and yeah, that's it for for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix predictions. We're really back for the Australian. Uh, sorry. <laughs> So the Arabian Grand Prix reaction. I will be back for Australian Grand Prix predictions next week. Sometime next week before the pr- first practice. So, so yeah. Um, next week for another dose of Max winning. <laughs> there we go. Uh, the Max gro- the Max wins every race F one season. Yeah, at this point, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, <laughs> you, you're not. No, rather, rather watch watch paint dry. What, rather burn my eyes. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> in a video game, YouTube in a video game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if he's gonna win like twenty or more races, he might as well win twenty four. So it's yeah, like, yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> if he if he wins like twenty or more races, he might as well get the record for all all wins. During the entire I'll be season. honest, I kind of want him to win every race, so the FIA go, oh, fudge, <laughs> we messed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be oh no, I'm sure they'll, they'll parade it around as some sort of incredible F1 achievement. Or the, the, the <laughs> my favorite thing they've been saying recently is that the uh, grid is as close as it's ever been. Well, from because all the rest of the cars are closer, yeah. except Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, from like, from like P19 to P, P uh, uh, sorry, P2 to P20, it's very close, but P1 is in, yes. in their own <laughs> world. Yeah, um, yeah, I think we can wrap it up. I don't think there's much else to talk about. We just uh, we're just laughing at our own, uh, I don't know, today, our own frustration or <laughs> misery. Yeah, misery. Yeah, just we're just we're just laughing at how just how bad we feel about this entire thing. Yeah, nothing we can do, nothing anyone can do about this domination. We just have to wait, and hopefully, twenty twenty six new Rex, Hopefully, Red Bull can uh, screw up their engine, and we can see another team win at least once. <laughs> uh, imagine okay. Max wins the entire season. This year and the next season as well. It'll be like fifty wins yeah. in a row. <laughs> God, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> get, 
can happen, right? I don't, I don't, I don't Guys, sports, I will stop paying for you. Yeah, um, um, yeah, I have to pay for F1 up until this year. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, now I have to pay for F1, and yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to pay still because, um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an F1 YouTuber now, and I. Even without F1, I don't have quant content. And even though if F1 is not very exciting on track, and there are some interesting topics off track, obviously that we could talk about sometime <laughs> if, we had, if we if we got the time for it. But on track is just not very interesting. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe uh, next season Red Bull doesn't bother to upgrade their car. They're just gonna bring in the RB20 again. And maybe you're gonna gonna get an exciting season. I don't know. Hopefully yeah. so. Yeah, I should probably go to the video because we should. I don't know how to call it. It's just talking like to to not fall into complete misery at this point. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, thank you, everyone. Who's been watching. Uh, this video and is watching my channel and our content for for these months. Obviously, obviously uh, it's going to continue, and I'm going to cover the entire season this time, as we're going to do the prediction series for the entire season. Twenty four races, twenty four max victories, and we're here for it. <laughs> even even if we're not very excited for it, we're here. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, you're enjoying the content and. Uh, yeah, if you're if you, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below what you want to see from us moving forward. And until next time, see ya.